reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will, be, there will come to the temple of the, the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming? And I who stand when he appears, for he is like the refined fire, or like the fool's lie. He will <coughs> sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of the old, as in the years gone by, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsatory song. Who is this King of Glory? It is the Lord. Who is this King of Glory? It is the Lord. Lift up, O gates, you lentils. Reach up, you ancestor of portals, and the King of Glory will come in. Who is this King of Glory? It is the Lord. Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord. Lift up, O gates, your lentils, reach up your ancestor portals, and the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. A reading from the letter of the Hebrews. Since the children shared in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to a slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God, to expedite the sins of the people, because he himself was tested through what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Praise God. Alleluia, alleluia. In light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were complete for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph 
took their son Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not die before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took the child into his arms, bless God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Now the child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about their son. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. You yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage. And then as a widow until she was 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Every now and then in our liturgical year we have either the perfect or the imperfect storm. And so today we have what you might consider either the perfect or the perfect storm. We have the Sunday, we have February 2nd, the Feast of the Presentation, we have the Feast of St. Blaise, and yesterday was Candle Mass uh, a day to even you know, add confusion to what exactly are we celebrating today. But the Feast of the Presentation takes precedence, at least according to the Ordo, which are the directions we get year after year after year that change a little bit. So we celebrate, we're here to celebrate the presentation so that you're not confused, though it is a Sunday, so we're fulfilling both. At the end of Mass, I'll be delighted to pray a generic prayer over the whole group of faithful gathered here of St. Blaise, Call asking St. Blaise to come upon everybody present here to bless your throats and your bodies to get all of us through the rest, please God, the rest of the, the winter. If, again, I'm, in, I'm new to the desert. I don't even know if you refer to it as winter up here in Southern California. Uh, I got a, an email from a friend back east, a, a young lady I used to teach in high school years ago, and she and it said they showed the picture of the groundhog and said happy, happy spring and to, to rub it in because they're freezing back east. I texted back, what's spring? <laughs> so, uh, but anyhow, so I'm happy to pray the blessing of St. Blaise over you and so that your throats and, and bodies will be blessed. Oh, please God. Uh, it's a wonderful feast of the presentation and it's good for us to remember, it's a reminder that God empties himself of divinity and is born uh, a human like us in all things but sin, and 
So therefore, being uh, it's because his mother and father were uh, 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 Mary and Joseph were uh, good and faithful Jews, they they praised Jesus as a good and faithful Jew. And so part of their religious tradition was to take the child, as, as we've read in, the, in Luke, to the temple and to, to present him uh, to you know to be blessed, to present him to God, so he would be dedicated to God. And uh, I would like to just zero in on, if I might, just the good news where uh, it, it says, and, and, uh, and I just want to hear, hear, read it here. So that, uh, and you yourself, okay, so this is Simeon to Mary, the mother, and you yourself a sword will pierce. And so we, we know that in the image of Mary, Mater de la Rosa, the, the broken heart, the pierced heart, heart of Mary, we have the image of her at the foot of the cross, and her heart is broken. Her only son, crucified, uh, found guilty, false charges, all based on lies, on jealousy, on, on a power struggle, and she knew he was innocent. And so uh, you, you can imagine the, 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 the heartache, uh, and the, sad, the great sadness that was, that was there. Uh, uh, but her heart is pierced so that the thoughts and hearts uh, of many, so that the hearts of thoughts and many hearts might be revealed. Now, it's almost as if they're, they're, they're reminding us in the good news to, to understand heartache and grief that all of us, uh, if, if there's someone here who hasn't yet had a broken heart, because of some kind of grief, some kind of death of a friend or family member, someone you love, uh, count your blessings, but it will come. And I share that, not in, in, a, in a sense of gloom and doom, but in a sense of reality, that part of the glory and bless, blessing of life is also death. And so uh, we're blessed with, with new life, and then we, the, the reality that we're not immortal, that we are mortal, we have to let go of, of one another. And so it, there's, there's great sorrow, and it's very humbling uh, to have to suffer the loss of someone we love dearly. And, and uh, it's important, it's a great message, however, and I'd like to fa uh, not fast forward, but to switch over and come back to this point, uh, but to talk about AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and the experience of AA, or anyone that's a member of it. Of, of, first of all, there are some who suggest that, the, that, um, that one of the greatest contributions that the United States of America has made to religious culture and religious truth is the founding of AA. That it, it's, it's, a, it's a very spiritual program. And, it, and it's very educational for those of us who, I, I grew up as a young child thinking that people who had drinking problems, that it was a moral problem, that, like a spiritual deficiency. And it took me a while for the light bulb to go on to get the truth that when you're addicted to whatever, you've lost your freedom. And when you lose your freedom, uh, we know from our teaching, you cannot sin. So alcoholism or addiction to anything, any other awful drug, it's a terrible sickness. It has nothing to do with morality. Uh, and that is important. And yet, do we just throw our hands up in despair and say nothing can be done? <coughs> On the contrary, the, the wonderful program of AA uh, is that it groups people together who are in, experiencing some sort of addiction, and there are many addictions we can suffer, where we lose our freedom, and without help, without intervention, uh, and, and this is what AA does provide. Now, as you can imagine, 44 years of priest, and then growing up before that in Catholicism, many times, like you, I have come to Mass, to prayer experiences, funerals, weddings, whatever, religious gatherings, uh, both Catholic and non-Catholic, that I've been privileged to attend as well. 
and they've been, and, and, and sometimes in monasteries where the where the liturgy is, you know, uh, it's, it's like military precision, but beautifully, reverently done. And I've had wonderful spiritual experiences at mass myself. Sometimes up here at the altar, leading, and sometimes up there in the pews with you, following whoever might be celebrating the mass. And it's been a religious experience for me uh, that has been very powerful. When I was uh, in the novitiate in Denver, Colorado, for the Dominicans, uh, uh, one of the friars was alcoholic and invited me to attend an AA meeting with him. And of course, immediately I thought, well, you've got to be an alcoholic to join or to, to come. He said, no, you can come, but you just must be very respectful of the importance of anonymity. And if you recognize somebody, you never say anything out of respect for their right to privacy, okay? As, as many of you may know, because many of you may be in the program. Uh, and uh, my family has a few people, uh, 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 a few members, some have died, who, who are alcoholics and who have attended AA. But I had never gone to a meeting, so I went. And I had been a Dominican in Novitia. Our liturgies were beautiful. We prayed the rosary together, we had Eucharist together, the music was wonderful, we were 10 novices together. And sometimes when the whole community came together, it was just so beautiful and I loved it. But when I went to this group of alcoholics and saw very rich people there, with very poor people there, the whole gamut of, of wealth and poverty, of education, there were doctors there, PhDs there, and high school dropouts there. And yet they were all gathered, and there was a unity, a unity there that I, I didn't even experience with my Dominican brothers in, in, in community. And then their prayer, it was the first time that I, in, that I really sensed that everybody there knew they needed salvation. They needed a savior. They call it a higher power because, as you know, alcoholism is, is an awful disease, a sickness that affects everybody, uh, every religion. Atheists, believers, the deepest people of faith, sometimes are, are, are sick this way, and people without any faith at all are sick this way, but they come together, and, and it was such a spiritual experience. And when they get up, not with pride, but with humility, my name is Mary, I'm an alcoholic. My name is Bill, I'm an alcoholic. And they introduce themselves if they're new to it. Uh, and, and what they're doing is they're admitting their, their weakness. And it, this is exactly what Simeon said to Mary that your heart will be broken so that the heart, the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. When they come together in AA, they share their brokenness, their common brokenness. This is not foreign to Catholic tradition. At every Eucharist, what do we do? The very same thing. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, our brokenness, our addictions, whatever we want to call it. And that, in, in, in that same spirit of the holiness of AA, the holiness of Catholic ritual and Holy Eucharist, that we, we begin, we're not bragging about our sins, we're not proud of our sins. It's in humility that we gather and we admit. And a lot of times when I run into it, I'm sure you may in your families, I have it in my family, we, we have people resisting, I don't go, you're all hypocrites, and they go, they remind us of all our sins and all the scandals and everything else like that. And I, and I said to them, well, you're not paying attention when you're coming to Mass. We're not in denial. We're not proud. But from the beginning, for centuries, we begin, before we listen to the word, before we receive communion, we admit our sin. And what we're, we're saying is, we need a higher power. In our Catholic tradition, we call it Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. One God, 
three divine persons. And that's the higher power. But we did, so we come together. So I, I shared that just to make you even more aware than you may not have been, or perhaps you are fully aware, that we have such a beautiful Roman Catholic liturgy that reflects what Simeon is warning Mary about, saying your grief, your, your, your grief will help someone else. Your humility, your honesty, your transparency will help someone else. And that's why we draw strength, don't we? We don't have to. In the old days, there was public confession. Today, it, it is private and ought to be. But just knowing that you come, a sinner, and I come, a sinner, with fellow sinners, realizing also the truth, so that we're balanced. We're more than our sin. That's not our whole story. God made us, and He hates sin, but He loves the sinner. And He wants us to not judge or condemn sinners, but love them. And he has shown us that he too loves the sinner. He's shown us how to do it. Uh, and so in the midst of Mary's brokenness, there is the good news that her humility and her brokenness lays bare the thoughts of many hearts. And, it, and it's encouraging, just as in AA, so we gather as, 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 as Christians and with honesty, and it, and it gives us strength to know we're in good company. We all belong. We're all sinners. We're all believers. We all need salvation. And, and, the, and the good news so that we leave with our hearts lifted up is God is always ready to take away our sin if we let him, to save us from our sin, and never never to judge us harshly or condemn us, but rather to redeem us, calling us, please, to do the same. How? By forgiving ourselves and everyone else who has hurt us. Uh.